So hi everyone. So we have almost completed our third, fourth, and fifth and sixth module. So we are going to the first module. So this is your first module topic, and the first topic in your first module is impact of a free jet. Now jet means if water jet means if you have a, a pipe. At one end you are connect, connecting a nozzle, as the water is coming out, it will be coming out with high velocity. Why? Because whenever you are using a nozzle, the area is getting restricted, it's getting reduced. As the area is getting reduced, the velocity will be increasing. So the pressure and energy will be reduced as well as the pressure uh, velocity head is getting increased. And that's the purpose of this nozzle. And this thing that this stream of water that is coming out of a nozzle is called as a jet. This is a jet of water. Now, if this jet of water is having an impact on a plate, I'm just keeping a flat plate like this. As it comes and gives a hit, this velocity will be transferred to this jet and the jet, I mean this plate and the plate will be moving in the forward direction like this. So that's called as the impact. Now, on, on how to calculate the impact of the jet, that's based on your impulse momentum principle. You have got the impulse momentum principle. I hope you remember this. In the last semester we have learned this in the third semester. So I'll just explain it briefly. Mass is equal, sorry, force is equal to mass into acceleration. You know that. So it is nothing but mass into change in velocity. Change in velocity if I'm writing it V1 minus V2 by time. So that is change in velocity by time. Now what is this? M mass means mass density multiplied by volume. Because this mass density is mass by volume. So mass by volume multiplied by volume. Volume volume get cancelled, you'll get mass. Into V1 minus V2 by T. Now what is this volume by time? That is nothing but your discharge. So that is a rho into Q into V1 minus V2. So this is your equation for force. So force, if I see in this step, what is this mv1 and mv2? This can be written as mv1 minus mv2 by 2. mv1 is the momentum and mv2 is the momentum. So this is a nothing but the change in momentum by time. Change in momentum by time. That is nothing but the rate of change of momentum. So it means that your force that you have, the force due to this impact is nothing but the rate of change of momentum or in terms of equation you can write it F is equal to rho into Q into initial velocity minus final velocity. So this is the equation. So you have to learn different types of uh, free jet and the different scenarios. So we'll deal one by one. The first case is the force exerted on a stationary flat plate being held normal to the jet means that you have a plate, the plate is held normal to the water jet. So this is the water jet, this is the nozzle that you are having, water is coming out with an initial velocity V. Just assume that this is stationary, that is I have kept it stationary so that it is not at all moving. This there. So the initial velocity of the plate is zero. So what happens is this flow is coming, so this flow is coming, this flow comes it hits the plate and gets divided into two parts and it will be going like this. It will be divided like this. It will be coming like this and it will be going out with velocity V and V. Just assume that you have the plate like this. The plate is here. The place, plate is kept here. Water comes and hit. It gets divided into two parts. When one part goes in the, this manner and the other part goes in this manner. So that plate will be kept there itself. So, as from the previous equation, I know, I know the equation that the force is equal to rho into q into initial velocity minus final velocity. I know. What I need to do is, I need, so this is the x direction and this is your y direction. So, this jet is flowing in the x direction. So, I need to find the force in x direction. The force in x direction obviously will be equal to the rho into discharge in x direction and initial velocity in x direction minus final velocity of the jet in x direction. I repeat, this is nothing but force is nothing but the rate of change of momentum. And 
as far as the force in x direction is concerned that is nothing but the rate of change of momentum in x direction rate of change of momentum in x direction so i'll be considering the velocity of this jet in x direction so that is nothing but rho into q into x what is the initial velocity of the jet in x direction in the x direction the initial velocity is v and once it hits it goes in this direction and this direction it's not going in the horizontal direction it's moving in the vertical direction it's moving in the y direction not in x direction so what is the final velocity of the jet in x direction in x direction it does not have any velocity it has only velocity in the y direction so the final velocity of the jet in x direction is zero this can be written as rho into q into x into v now q is the discharge in x direction the x direction velocity is v and just assume that the opening of this nozzle is having an area a then the discharge in x direction will be a into v so if i substitute that this rho into a into v multiplied by v that is a rho a v square so fx is equal to rho a v square this is how we calculate the force so the second case where the force exerted on a stationary flat plate held inclined to the jet so this the plate is kept inclined and this is stationary jet discharge is coming the discharge is q and after hitting it it is getting divided into two parts q1 is going in this portion and q2 is going in this portion and this is velocity and this is making an angle theta here so this is making an angle theta so if i extend this so this angle is theta if i consider this triangle here this small triangle here the small triangle this is the direction this is perpendicular this angle is 90 degree this is theta so this makes this angle to be 90 minus theta that angle will be 90 minus theta and this line and this line are perpendicular and if this is 90 minus theta this angle will be theta so that means this to be v cos theta and this to be v sin theta so that's how this the component v cos theta and v sin theta i need to calculate the force in the normal direction what is the force acting in the normal direction force acting in the normal direction we know that force is equal to rho into discharge into initial velocity in the normal direction minus final velocity in the normal direction this is the equation and i can expand rho into q into what is the initial velocity in the normal direction this is the normal direction to the plane this is the normal direction and this is the tangential direction so in the direction no normal to the plane the initial velocity is v sin theta and the final velocity after hitting it it is going like this and it's going both the velocities are tangential to the plane the component of this velocity v and v perpendicular to this or normal to the plane is zero so that's why minus zero that is given by rho into q into v sin theta and we know that discharge is equal to area in the velocity so that's why that can be written as an a into velocity into v sin theta so it becomes rho into a v square sin theta so that's how you calculate the fx or rather the force in x direction this rho a v square into sin theta now your normal force will be acting like this your normal force is acting like this this is fx that normal force can be resolved as fx as well as fy now I need to find which angle is theta, whether this angle is theta or this angle is theta. So that we need to find. See, this angle, this angle, this angle we have got it to be theta. Now this line and this line are perpendicular at the same time. This line and this line are perpendicular. So this that makes this angle to be theta. So it means if this is Fn, this is this Fy will be equal to the cos component. Fy will be equal to Fn cos theta and fx will be equal to fn sin theta and if you substitute the value for it's not fn this is fn because we found it to the end di normal direction so that makes fy is equal to instead of that if you substitute to this value rho a into v square sin theta into cos theta and this is equal to rho a v v square sin theta multiplied by sin theta so that will be equal to rho a v square 
sin square theta. So f x is rho a v square sin square theta and f y is equal to rho a v square sin theta cos theta. So that's how you calculate the force in x direction and y direction. So earlier we have seen what was the force which is acting normal to it. Right now we'll be trying to find out the forces or rather the uh, force in the tangential direction. Force in the tangential direction. So I'll be writing the force in the tangential direction Ft. We know that that's the rate of change of momentum in the uh, initial direction minus rate of change of momentum in the final, uh, final direction. So that's first one. This so rho into in the initial direction in the initial tan the velocity in the tangential direction is v cos theta. So rho into discharge is q. Then the velocity is v cos theta minus. Now coming to the second time, you have one velocity like this and one velocity like this. I'll be taking this tangential direction to be positive. So minus rho into the discharge is q1 and the velocity after impacting here the water is coming like this and it is going like this and going like this after the impact the velocity does not change just with the same velocity v it is going like this and going like this so this rho v1 minus rho into q2 into not v1 it's v so this is the initial momentum that is rho into q into v cos theta in the tangential direction minus the second the second what happens is the same mass of water getting split into two and this is taken to be positive this is taken to be negative so that's why rho into here the discharge is q1 velocity is same v and here the discharge is q2 and velocity is v that is rho into q v cos theta minus rho into q1 v minus rho into Q2V. In every term you have V and rho common. So I'll be taking rho into V. That can be written as Q cos theta minus Q1. And when I open the bracket it becomes plus plus Q2. And this is the tangential force. Now just assume that any, if you take any plate, the tangential force acting on it, the tangential force acting on it will be the friction. Isn't it? It is the friction. I'm assuming there's no friction here, no friction. If there's no friction means there's no tangential force. In that case, I can write this tangential force which is equal to friction is nothing but zero. I'm assuming there's no frictional losses. This is zero. If this is zero, I can write rho v into q cos theta minus q1 plus q2 is equal to zero. So that becomes q cos theta minus q1 plus q2 is equal to 0. Let this be the first equation and look at this figure. It is the q discharge that is coming and discharge is getting converted to q1 and q2. That means I can say that this q is equal to q1 plus q2. That I can write that q is equal to q1 plus q2. So from this equation itself I can substitute. If, if I am writing this q2 is equal to, from this equation I can write q2 is equal to Q minus Q1 and I'm substituting this in first equation. So there is Q cos theta minus Q1 plus Q minus Q1 is equal to 0. So that means Q into 1 plus cos theta is equal to 2Q1 or rather Q1 is equal to Q by 2 into 1 plus cos theta. Similarly, if you find Q2, Q2 will be equal to Q by 2 into 1 minus cos theta. So this is how you get the values. So in questions, we have to know the value for Q1 and Q2. Just remember that the portion which is going up, that is Q1 and Q1 is given by the total discharge Q by 2 into 1 plus cos theta and which is coming down is Q by 2 which is 1 minus cos theta. That Please remember it.